Today we are going to talk about uh, OneDrive. What is this? This is the answer to a question. What is the question? The most common or most popular place to keep your files, even today, continues to be desktop. That's a sad thing because desktop is the wrong place to store all your files. What you should be doing, typically what happens on a desktop is there is limited space and it, uh, you run out of that space. And then there is no scroll bar. Long file names are not visible. Then you create folders. It's a disaster. In any case, even if you don't store files on desktop, we store them on local drive, C colon, D colon, my documents, and then it leads to all these problems. And these problems are so common that we have got used to them. If a disk fails, typically we don't have any backup at all. IT is not supposed to take backup of local disk. If you don't have your machine on and you're in a different place, you don't get the file. And most importantly, we end up creating too many copies of our files. Why does that happen? Because I create a file and then I have need for input from other people. So I send a mail CC with attachments and then I get replies. Then I have to copy paste, copy paste in number of times. Then still not done. These guys need to know what I've done. So one more round, it goes on and on and on. At the end of it, you'll have some 27 copies. And instead of calling this inefficient, we actually end up calling it teamwork. That's a joke. We know this is wrong. We know this is inefficient. We still do it. The reason is we have been doing it for years, so we got used to that inefficiency. So what is the root cause of all these problems? Obviously, the file is going to people. When file is going to people, copies are going to get created. So what is the logical solution? Keep the file in one place and let people come to the file. And that place obviously is one place for one person in such a way that when you put a copy there, you don't need to make another copy of the file. And of course you get one TB of space. That's why it is called OneDrive. Of course, there's nothing special about OneDrive. All cloud storage solutions give you this, but this is OneDrive for business. So it gives you much higher level of security, compliance and auditability. That's why it's called for business. One thing which is commonly not known is if you store a file on OneDrive, how many people can see it? The answer obviously is one. The next immediate question which comes to my mind is for so many years I'm keeping my files on my local drive, so I don't care whether I'm connected to internet or not. But on OneDrive, if I put it on OneDrive, which is on cloud and I don't have internet, what do I do? Like this guy here sitting obviously doesn't probably have internet there. The idea is even if you store a file on OneDrive, it doesn't tell you that, but there is always a local copy and that copy can be edited on when you don't have internet connection. When you eventually get connected, it will automatically sync. It's not an earth shaking discovery, but many people don't know it, so they have that worry. What will I do when offline? So you don't worry at all. The next thing I'm sure some of you can relate to because very often, especially in Excel, large files hang and your work gets wasted. Auto save every 10 minutes doesn't work. So the moment you save a file on OneDrive, what happens? It's auto saved every time you make a change. So you will never have file corruption. That's something which is commonly not noticed, but that's one of the most important benefits of storing a file on OneDrive. Another misconception people have is only office files can be stored on OneDrive. That's absolutely wrong. All kinds of files can be stored. Of course, for uh, security reasons, some kind of files like executables cannot be stored, but that's more for securing your environment than convenience. <clears throat> your IT team may have even prevented you from putting videos because many times people end up misusing them. So that's how any type of file can be stored on OneDrive. In fact, even if you don't have AutoCAD or Photoshop or Illustrator or those applications installed on your machine, 
you can still see their preview, which is a very nice feature of OneDrive, which is commonly not known. Around 200 different non Microsoft file types previews are seen on OneDrive on browser as well as on desktop and on mobile. So. One very simple but very nice feature is when you store a file on OneDrive, you'll notice there is a file name and there is a drop down. When you open that drop down, it actually allows you to rename a file without closing it. I'm sure you have struggled to do that before because if the file is open, you could not rename it earlier. Now you can just a small little additional benefit of using OneDrive. You must be realizing that CCs with attachments, which you have been doing for decades, is actually your enemy. So this, I'm sure you know, this is a most famous villain, Joker. And what is his most famous dialogue? I'm sure many of you know. So our dialogue is why so inefficient. So remember, if you have OneDrive and you're still sending attachments, this guy is watching you. Yes, I can make him blink on demand. Don't worry about how I did it. That's a PowerPoint thing. Bottom line, start sharing links instead of sending attachments. Why is that? Because when you share a link with someone for the first time in life, it allows you some control. You have multiple choices to choose from. Very rarely will you use anyone with the link. That's like an anonymous link. Dangerous. Don't do it unless you really want to public, public, publicly share the file. Typically, this is the most commonly used specific people and then you choose whether you want to allow them editing or not. So if it's a Word document you want inputs, allow this. If it's an Excel file report, don't allow this. Another option, if no editing, you can also block download. If you block download, then the file will open only on browser. Even if they have Word, Excel, PowerPoint installed, that option itself is disabled and copy paste buttons get disabled. So it's safer than sending an attachment because if you send attachment, you were never in control. You never had idea as to what the other party is doing with your file. Now you are in control because the file is not going anywhere. It's with you all the time. Now we may still have to send files on email. No problem. When you say insert attachment, it shows you recent file list. I'm sure you have noticed that. Assuming you have new version of Outlook, new means three year old. But it also shows you cloud icons. This means these files are either on OneDrive, SharePoint or Teams. When you choose a file of this type, it also gives you an option. What is the option? Share link and attach as copy. But if you don't know why sharing link is good for you, habitually you're going to click on this. That's a spinal cord level reflex. It's not really going to your brain. So next time share a link because that is good for you, good for the other party and it, it also improves security. So always this, never this. Although I'm saying never, it's not 100% never, never, never. There are situations where you have to send a copy. So if it's a legal notice you are sending, yes, it has to be an attachment. If it's an RFP or floating, yes, attachment and so on. Salary slip you can't send as a link, no problem. But at least 90% of cases you should be able to send links and life is better. By the way, max file size single file can be 15 GB. Now multiple people can edit at the same time. Maybe you have tried it, maybe you have not tried it. But what I'm saying is once you share the file, the file still remains in one place. Anybody can come and edit at different times or at the same time. It does not matter. What matters is you're never going to get replies back and you never have to copy paste. You will always have the latest copy with you. That means a better quality document faster with zero chance of error. There may be a rare case where the same thing is edited by two people. For example, here, this is the original shape. Someone changed the color to this. Someone changed the color to this almost at the same time. Now in these situations, PowerPoint in this case cannot decide whether to keep the green one or the pink one, so it will ask the owner which one to keep. That is called a conflict resolution dialogue and you choose which one you want to keep. This is comparatively rare, but it is available for all products. In case of Excel, same cell edited by two people at the same time. The last person to press enter 
will succeed and it will override the previous one. Now here is a situation before after you send a file attachment to someone and then that person forwards it to someone, that person forward to someone else. You absolutely have no clue. Now in one drive, what will happen? You send a link to someone. That link is forwarded by someone to someone else. You can't prevent that, but that link is not going to open. It will ask B, give me username, password of A, only then I'll open the file. So these links automatically make your life safer. Similar before after situation. I'm sure this has happened to you. You sent an attachment, made a mistake, then you try to recall. Obviously it doesn't work properly. In fact, you don't even know whether recall worked or not and for how many people it worked. So you send another mail. Typically nobody reads your mails, but this time people have read the wrong version already. It's a chaos. Now obviously this is never going to happen if you use links because even if you send a file, we are actually sending a link. So you change it, no problem. Everyone still sees the latest version. So no brainer, but important to notice it and feel good about the fact that OneDrive is giving me all these benefits. Another before after email attachment you get, you open it, edit it, and then you lose those changes. I am sure this has happened to you many times. Again, that doesn't happen here because when you get a link, you are opening the original file, so you don't have to worry about is it saved, is it in temp folder, is going to keep the changes correctly. The only problem there may be, all this slide looks good, but there is a disadvantage. Suppose someone made a change or someone made a mistake, deleted something, did not realize, then what happens? Unlike before, we don't have attachments, we don't have anything in sent items, we don't have intermediate copies. So what do we do? In those cases, what do we do? Don't worry, that has also been thought of. Every time someone makes a change, versions are stored automatically. For example, I have multiple versions, up to 500 versions are stored and the storage is deducted only for the base file, not for the version. Versions are free. So if you made a mistake, you can just open a previous version, check if that mistake is there or not there, and then you can restore and then get rid of the mistake. In some cases, especially in Word, this feature appears. If you have a document which has been changed by many people and you suddenly saw the current version, you have not enabled track changes, you want to know what change. You can choose compare, in which case it shows you this complicated looking thing, but it's really nice. Shows you the original document, the revised document, the merged document, and a list of changes. I have intentionally made it less clear because I just want to show you the pattern of how this opens. So bottom line, everything has been thought out to make our life easier and more efficient. Now one common problem which people face is before OneDrive, if I wanted to make change to a file and save as, I would open the original file, make changes, save as and save the new file name. Original file is not changed. Now, if you do that with OneDrive, notice what happens. Original file you opened, you made changes. Because there is auto save, changes are already going in the original file. So now if you save it as a new file, changes are there in both. So you'll get confused. So what is the way to change your behavior? When you open a file with the intention of making changes, save a copy first, then make changes so that the original file is not affected. Now you may not be a technical person, but you know what is ransomware. Some virus comes and encrypts your disk. When that happens, what happens? Your local files get encrypted, your server files get encrypted. Now what? OneDrive files on OneDrive also got encrypted. Don't worry, that has also been thought of. In OneDrive, there is a nice little feature called restore your OneDrive. If you got attacked today, the previous versions as on yesterday are all there. So you just move this pointer to the previous day and all files, doesn't matter whether there are 10 or 10,000, 10, will automatically revert to the previous saved version. So you don't lose anything, you don't pay ransom. So that's another nice thing. Finally, what I'm saying is you should understand so many benefits of OneDrive, so you should standardize the way you work. What I've noticed is some people, when I ask them, they say, do you use OneDrive? Yes, I use OneDrive. Then I ask them, do you put all your new files on OneDrive? Then they are looking at each other. That's not called using OneDrive, that's called misusing OneDrive. 
if it has so many benefits, why do you want to trouble your new files? So OneDrive should be used at least for all the new files, not necessarily all the old files, but at least the active files or folders. So if you open a local file, remember to save it on OneDrive. Don't copy it to OneDrive, move it to OneDrive and then life is easier. Don't try to copy all the my documents to OneDrive because there may be many old files which have never opened before. Only the active files and folders should go to OneDrive and life is good. Then there is one small little thing called files on demand because OneDrive has one terabyte of space and your local drive may not have that much space. So this option make sure it is enabled. It's called files on demand. So when you open or sync files, most files will have cloud icon. That means those files are not downloaded locally. Only when you double click on the file, the file will be downloaded locally. If you want a particular file to be kept always locally, then you right click and say always keep. On the other hand, if there is a large file, you're not using it. You want to have an entry for that file, but not occupy space locally, especially large Excel files, video files, then right click and say free up space. So best of both worlds. So basically all the three problems which we started with we have solved and these. Are completely managed by OneDrive and you get more. So there are as I mentioned 12 benefits of using OneDrive. I'm not going to read all of them out because we have already seen many of them. And now that's the summary slide in bottom line. My documents is gone conceptually. It is still very much there. My documents is now replaced with OneDrive, which is better from every point of view you look at. Gives you the best of both worlds, local convenience plus server plus backup and many other things. One last slide before we finish. This is a slide for IT. If you are from IT, read it. If you are not from IT, just show this slide to your IT team. Many people in IT and security disable external sharing, thinking that is insecure. Please tell them sending attachments has been insecure for 20 years. Sending links instead of attachment is much more safer. So please don't disable external sharing. If you do, people will find other insecure cloud applications to share files, which is worse. That's called shadow IT. That's the end of today's formal official session. You can put questions and if you have any specific things you want to ask, I can also show you live answers and give demos as well. What is the best way to transfer personal to business account? The data volume is around 700 GB. If the data is really, really large, there is a facility where Microsoft can. If you can ship a hard disk to Microsoft, so you'll have to check with your local Microsoft team as to what is available. If that facility is not available to you, then the only option you have is try to upload. And that will require a lot of time depending on the bandwidth you have. Uh, my OneDrive keeps crashing and my IT team just reinstalls it and it works again for a few months before happening again. What should I do? OK, uh, that is a problem. Typically that problem happens when there are two versions of OneDrive fighting with each other. So OneDrive has had a checkered history. When it started as a product, it was not stable. It was crashing all the time. It did not do sync. Everything which it was supposed to do, it did not do well. It took Microsoft at least one, one and a half years to stabilize. Check if you have two different versions of OneDrive on your machine, and that is most common reason of corruption. The older version of OneDrive was called Groove. So if you go to your task manager, and see groove.exe and onedrive.exe. That is the reason. The second reason could be they are not installing the latest version of OneDrive. Next question is what if we save our file in SharePoint? Sure. So which file to share, share, save in SharePoint, which file to save in OneDrive is your discretion. Typically, files which you would have saved in my documents are saved to OneDrive. Files which you typically have saved to a server share, so to say, are stored on SharePoint. So my documents go to OneDrive. Departmental files typically go to SharePoint, and if there is a project involved, then those files should go to Teams. So three situations. 
Can I parallelly save files on OneDrive, Dropbox, and Google Drive via common folder on desktop or laptop? Not to my knowledge, no, because all of them monitor their own folder and they will clash with each other unless someone has written a tool which manages the show, but I doubt that. Next question. Can you explain the different icons used in OneDrive for file status? If you see a cloud icon, that means that particular thing is on cloud only and you can't use it locally. It's a green icon with tick mark. That means the file is available locally as well as on cloud. There are two types of green icons. One is a hollow one and one is a filled one. The hollow one means the file was downloaded on demand when you double clicked on a cloud file. If it's a filled green one, that means the file you intentionally said right clicked on it and said always keep on my drive. And then there can be an icon with a red dot. That means there is a problem in syncing that file. So those are the four types of icons. Files stored on OneDrive, are they virus free? Does virus scanning happen in the background on MS servers itself or is this additional service which needs to be availed? Microsoft keeps data for millions of users, so they absolutely have highest level of security, not just antivirus. What uh, you need to do is manage your local drive. There, OneDrive server protection cannot help you, so local machines you have to protect. Yeah. How to prevent the files from downloading outside the organization? As I said, when you are sharing the file, you have an option which says, do you want to allow editing or not? If you say don't allow editing, then there is an option called do not download. That prevents download. If we share link to people from outside the organization, will they get access to only that particular file or folder? No problem. So as I said, if you share a file, you are sharing only that file and you are deciding what happens with that file. Others can't. Other files are not available at all. Having said that, if you want to share multiple files, you have a choice of putting the files in a folder and sharing the folder. In either case, you can go to the sharing option again, choose manage access and change the sharing later. So initially you gave read write access after that person has done the editing. You can either remove access completely or you can give read only access. So bottom line, you are always in control. How does rights management work along with OneDrive? So when you go to file protection, there is something called restrict access. These are called IRM protection templates. That allows you to decide protection in such a way that the protection travels with the file. The newer, more sophisticated way of doing that is called sensitivity labels. Sensitivity levels put a visible label called confidential or top secret or whatever, but it's not just a label. It automatically decides who can see the files and who cannot. So once the file is protected, either using IRM or these things is called Microsoft Information Protection. Even if you give a file on a USB to someone, they can't open it unless they are one of the valid users which have been defined in the IRM. So that's how IRM works. This is something which IT has to configure for you, but most companies are now doing it because data is the most important thing we are protecting. Is there any name restriction for OneDrive files? There is a restriction for file length. You can go to the technical documentation and see it. It was originally 256 characters or something, but now it has been revised. How to prevent employees to download the files to their personal computers? Because the files are on cloud, people can look at the files wherever they are. Now, if you don't want them to do it from an insecure, non-registered company asset, which could be a non-registered laptop or a mobile phone, which is not under your MDM, then you use conditional access, which is a part of Active Directory. Active Directory is capable of understanding where you are logging in from, which device you are logging in from, and if it is an approved device. Also gives you further level of granularity in the sense, suppose it's a personal device not registered with company, but it is potentially required for you to see a file at home for whatever reason. If that is the case, then 
OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, all of them will degrade in functionality in the sense they will allow you to receive the or edit the file on browser, but prevent download. So differential control based on the conditions prevailing on the device, the location, IP address and so on. Conditional access is the answer. How did you get that green background behind your video? Oh, that's a physical plot. No rocket science there. So I do some YouTube videos where I need to replace the background using chroma keys. So green is the most commonly used color for that. All right then, thank you for joining. All the videos which you have done so far and all the future videos will be available at the same same link. This is a playlist and of course I have many many more videos on efficiency 365 channel on YouTube. So that's all we have for now. See you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Thank you.